Hey everyone, Lance here. I wanted to make a quick video as I've finally tried to make use of my Western Digital My Cloud that I have here. It's been sitting mostly unused for quite a long time, but I initially bought it to make copying things between my PC and my Mac easier, but then it was so clunky, loud and slow that I never ended up using it much. But recently I found a great write-up online, and I'll put a link in the description. Full credit goes to the original author of course as well. His name was Raphael on the Western Digital Community Forums. But I thought I'd make a quick video for people that were more interested in watching something than reading something. Of course the first thing you want to make sure of is that you have a good network, as obviously you're never going to get good copying speeds to a network drive if you've got a slow network. I have an ASUS RTAC88U router which supports AC Wi-Fi and has Gigabit Ethernet. My PC also has Gigabit Ethernet and my Mac, which is a 2017 MacBook Pro, has AC Wi-Fi. So I'm all good in that department. You want to check the light colour on the back of the MyCloud next to the Ethernet port. Green means you're connected to a Gigabit network and if it's showing yellow it means you're connected to a 100 Megabit network. Some routers will only run at the speed of the slowest connected device, so you may be affecting your speed by having a 100 megabyte device connected to your network and everything else being a gigabit device, so that is something else to be aware of. If you are connected via Ethernet, you can check what speed your computer is running at. Now my MacBook Pro doesn't have an Ethernet port and I don't have an Ethernet adapter, so I can't show you this part, but on a Mac you'd want to go into System Preferences, Network, and then under Ethernet, there'll be an Advanced button. When you click the Advanced button, there'll be a Hardware tab at the top, and it should show you the speed. If it's a gigabit, it will have 1000 base T. If it's 100 megabits, it'll say 100 base T, etc. Like I said, I don't have an Ethernet adapter, so I can't show you that, but I will get up and close and show you what it looks like on a PC. To check the speed your Ethernet is running at on your PC, you want to go to the Start menu and click on Control Panel. From here we want to go to Network and Internet and we should see Change Adapter Options. It may say Change Adapter Settings on older versions of Windows I believe too. Once we've clicked that we can see my Ethernet connection here and double clicking on that will show us the status and we can see the speed is 1 gigabit per second. So I'm running at gigabit Ethernet which is what we want. So as long as there's no other slower devices connected to your router and the router supports gigabit then that is the speed you'll be running at and that's the theoretical speed you'll get when connecting to your Western Digital MyCloud. I've already mapped my Western Digital MyCloud and I'm running Windows 10 but if you were to do this we'd want to click the folder icon down here which will take us to this PC. We can see the internal drives and we can see that mine's already mapped down here but if yours isn't mapped we would click computer up the top here and then map network drive. It'll bring us to this page and we want to click Browse. This will bring us to any network shares or network sharing locations we can connect to. Usually other computers on your network will appear here if they've been set to share files. Um, the Western Digital MyCloud isn't showing for me here, but it is showing network locations or shared locations on my PC. So normally once you've selected your Western Digital MyCloud here, if you've set up network shares that require a password, whatever you select will prompt you to enter that password. And whenever I restart, this is automatically showing in Windows Explorer. So I don't need to do this whenever I reboot, it's just automatically there. On a Mac, mounting the drive is obviously a bit different, but to map the drive, we want to go into Finder and choose Go from the top menu and choose Connect to Server. Now we want to type this server address, we want to use SMB to connect, so we want to go SMB colon slash slash and then WD My Cloud. WD My Cloud will be the default name, but if you have changed it within the web interface of the Western Digital My Cloud, you'll need to keep that in mind and use that name here. But I've kept it default, we then want to go to connect and it will say you're attempting to connect to the server WD MyCloud and we'll go connect and it will ask for the password and username for a registered user Now that's one registered within that web UI when you first set up the MyCloud so I'll type my password and connect this time I'll type it correctly oh I need to type the username correctly too and we'll want to remember this in the keychain and then we'll go connect 
We then wanna choose the share that you want mounted. So I want public, we'll go okay. Now that is mounted, we can see my stuff here, we can see that it's under shared on the left. Now there's one more thing we need to do, because otherwise when we restart, it's gonna disappear, and we need to go through all of that again. So we wanna to go to your users and groups, and on your main user, we then wanna to go to login items, and we wanna drag that share across to here to be a login item. So now everything we've just done will be automatically done when we log into the Mac and this will automatically show under shared on the left. We won't need to type any passwords in because we remembered it in the keychain. So now it's all set up on the Mac and that is all good to go. It's mapped on the PC through Samba and SMB on the Mac. So now that is all good to go. So we're ready to shell in and I'll get to that now. Now we've checked our speed and got our drive mapped. I wanted to get to the problem that the Western Digital MyCloud has, and that's the fact that your speeds are really affected and the drive almost seems like it's always running or runs at random times, and that's due to the constant analyzing of files and media and creating thumbnails of these. This means mine had always roared up in the middle of the night, woken me up, and it was just horrible, so I ended up disconnecting it and haven't used it in quite a long time. This kind of indexing process is covered in a bit more detail in the write-up, but essentially to get quick access to files anywhere on the drive for DLNA or Twonky or the iTunes service that the Western Digital MyCloud provides, it indexes all the different types of media for quick access, which obviously would take a lot of time. Two issues seem to occur during this indexing, which appear to never finish, and that is that as well as the drive being slow, it will also disconnect from the network and not be accessible if you force restart it or try and force restart it because you're just getting terrible speeds and you just want to give it a reboot. It'll disconnect from the network soon after and try and resume that indexing. The other problem is, which isn't as big a problem for me but might affect other people, is that when you connect a drive to the USB port, the whole system becomes unresponsive and file access speeds don't move. The system becomes slow and that's because it's trying to start performing that indexing on that external drive you've connected. Anyway, to the workaround, and bearing in mind that because we will be SSHing into the drive and changing some of the software, this could affect your warranty, which I'm not 100% sure how a software change would, but it was mentioned in the write-up and the guy writing it claims to work for Western Digital, so that is something to keep in mind. But essentially we'll be SSHing into the drive, stopping those processes and then disabling those processes, meaning that they won't ever run in the background. So you will lose media thumbnails within mobile device apps, but if you don't use those apps, that's not going to affect you. But that's probably enough talking for now. Let me get in close and show you how to do that. Oh, and by the way, I will be doing it on a Mac, but I believe you can also do it on a PC through Windows PowerShell. Or Command Prompt, maybe. Obviously the first thing we want to do is enable SSH on the WD MyCloud. So we want to go to wdmycloud.local forward slash UI and we then want to log in and we'll access the settings that I see in front of me here. Now obviously we can see it's rebuilding that content database thing that it's got running in the background. But we want to go over to settings and then network and we can see SSH down here. We want to switch that on and it gives some terms and conditions basically saying that it makes it less secure but it gives us the username and default password. So we want to click I accept and I'm going to copy that password and the username is root and then I'm going to click OK. It's then going to refresh and update those settings and I then want to go and open up terminal and to SSH in, we just want to type SSH space root at, and then the IP address. So we need to take note of that, either from your router settings. Mine is just 192.168.1.2. Hit return. And are you sure you want to continue? Yes. So we hit the letter Y and press enter. Oh, sorry, type the word yes and press enter. And then we'll paste that password and hit enter. So 
Now we are SSH'd into the Western Digital MyCloud. So it's got a little bit about it, and then we're ready to type those commands. I've got them written down, they're quite long, I haven't remembered them, so I'll just bring those up for us now. So I've got all these commands up here, so this will stop one service, this will stop the next one, and then these will disable those services from running. So I should in theory be able to type all four or copy all four in, but I'm going to do one at a time. So that is stopping that service, which it said it's done okay. That is stopping this service, which it's done okay. And then I'm going to disable these. I can't highlight. So the first one, a lot comes out here. I don't particularly know what it all means. And the next one, same thing. I'm not going to pretend like I know what it means. And I do apologize for what I said earlier. It looks like there is no way to natively disable, or sorry, run SSH on Windows. But there are a lot of freeware applications. Putty seems like a popular one. I was doing a little bit of reading. On Mac or Linux, you can do it directly from terminal and it's really easy. SSH, space, the default username that's created, and then an at or at the rate of symbol, some people will call it, and then the IP address of the MyCloud. It'll then prompt for the password, enter the password, and we're good to go. Um, for peace of mind, feel free to disable SSH once you're done. Now that we've disabled those processes, I wanted to show you within the browser interface for the WD MyCloud that the content scan now shows idle, and the capacity categories all show a 0kb and everything is showing under other. So that confirms that these processes are stopped and haven't re-enabled themselves. So that means that they have been disabled or in theory they have been disabled and that is exactly what we were after. Obviously now that we've disabled those processes you won't see thumbnails in the mobile applications for the MyCloud and you'll also lose some of that media server functionality both of which I'm not worried about and weren't features that I purchased the MyCloud for and it's now simply a kind of no frills uh, sort of poor man's network attached storage that you can just go to your electronics store and buy which is mainly what I bought it for so I'm hoping that this is going to greatly enhance my use of this product. Hopefully it's not going to start up at random times or just have the disc spinning loudly all the time, but only time will tell. But that's all I really wanted to cover in this video guys. I do thank you all a lot for watching. Feel free to check out the link to the written guide of this in the description. Once again thanks to Raphael from the WD Community Forums for writing this up and helping me find how I can improve my Western Digital MyCloud. I believe it also does apply to other cloud storage or network attached storage consumer grade devices that Western Digital provide as well. So if you have other devices, definitely check it out. And also definitely feel free to check out my Instagram and Twitter down below. I'll post links in the description to those too. I'll also post the uh, commands, or the SSH commands in the description. So you can simply copy and paste those as you follow along to this as well. But hey guys, I do thank you all a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.